This is the Ninja Foodi digital air fry oven. It's a fancy schmancy toaster oven that air fries, air roasts, air broils, bakes, dehydrates, and toasts. Is this the Michael Air Jordan of toaster ovens? Let's find out. Is it thumbs up? We did a good cookie? Yeah. <laughs> so just to establish a scene here, we're coming from a dark place in the toaster oven game. That's not metaphorical. We literally hit our toaster oven in a dark corner so that no one would see it. It's not that we set out to abuse our toaster oven, but you know how in life when you stop caring about something, you just kind of neglect it and you let your kids melt non-food items in it? That's what I'm talking about here. But with this one, there will be no neglecting, hopefully, because it cost me $230. So let's get right into this review. First off, it comes with a crumb tray, wire rack, air fry basket, and a baking pan. The instructions say to give these parts a nice warm bath before using for the first time. Now that everything's clean, let's test it out. We're trying to eat a little healthier here, so we're gonna make some sweet potato fries. I've only made these one other time in my oven and I couldn't get them crispy, so I'm hoping air frying helps with that. We're gonna cook two pounds, and I challenged my son Luke to weigh out two pounds of sweet potatoes without using a bowl. Come on, bear. We need two pounds. It's 2 11 right now. All right, perfect. Next, we cut and soak them in cold water for 30 minutes, then pat dry. The instructions give times and temps for only one pound, so we're gonna shoot from the hip here and see what happens when we double it. Are you excited to eat some sweet potato fries? Yeah, except you're not gonna eat them. If you eat a sweet potato fry, Asher Nathan, yeah. I will give you a thousand dollars. I'm coating them in a little olive oil to help crisp them up. So we're gonna set this to air fry. And I need to up the temp. So temp, I need to go to 390. And then time, 30 minutes. And then what? Do I hit, is there a start? Oh, yep, yeah, right there. So it's gonna preheat now. One thing that really surprised us is just how fast this oven preheats. I mean, it's very fast. This only took under a minute to preheat from a cold oven. Oh, look at that. Oh, is it preheated already? And if you notice, the timer doesn't stop. Keeps going, so I'll have to reset that time. So just to summarize and make a long story short, we overloaded the toaster oven with two pounds of raw sweet potato fries using the air fryer basket. We air fried them at 390 degrees for 30 minutes, turning them a couple times throughout. After 30 minutes, they weren't crispy enough, so we cooked them for another 10 minutes. And after a total of 40 minutes, they still weren't that crispy, but we did learn that sweet potatoes are not that great. They're just okay, just not great. All right, so I'm gonna try it. Uh, not bad. It's sweet. They're not crispy? Oh, okay. They're not, <laughs> you don't like it? The horrible. <laughs> Aww. Good They're horrible? Yeah. I'm sorry. You didn't like it? No. But despite mm. that you don't like sweet potato taste, how is the fry that was air fried? So gross. <laughs> Thousand bucks Ash, if you eat this. Ash, they're disgusting. Thousand bucks. Ash, Listen. Mmm. That's a nice crunch. That was an edge one. Okay, so I can't say this was a total fail because to be fair, I overloaded the basket and I'm not even sure sweet potato fries will ever get crispy in an air fryer. If you've had a different experience, let us know in the comments below. Sorry, you look like you're having a good time over there. <laughs> Are those your favorite? I like them. Our next test is chicken wings. And unlike the last test, I'm very experienced in the chicken wing arts. Living in fairly close proximity to Buffalo, I've eaten chicken wings most of my life. I like them buffalo style and well done. The air frying chart that comes with the oven has a cook time of 28 to 30 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I must have been looking at the cooking chart for something else when I set this, but we're close enough. Now, if you notice, I didn't put the baking pan underneath the air fryer basket. That was stupid. The thinking was I would get more airflow, which is right, but then the grease just drips down to the bottom and onto the burners, creating a gigantic mess. 
The air fryer basket has an indentation allowing the air to pass through the bottom even if the baking pan is directly underneath. I realized my mistake about 8 minutes in and put the pan underneath so some of this mess could have been avoided. I say some of the mess because there's still grease flying everywhere. But oh well, at least we'll see how it cleans up. Stay tuned. Okay, so this thing does a great job of cooking chicken wings. I ended up cooking them at 390 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes, flipping them a few times throughout. And they came out perfect, similar to deep frying. Gonna try and do. See the bone comes out right here, so I'm gonna try and go hold it on. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. Mm. Are you sure there's no bone in there? There is. Okay. Oh gosh. Right off. My only complaint is the giant mess it created. There's grease everywhere. For our next test, we're making toast. And for $230, this thing better make toast like Colonel Sanders makes chicken. One of the reasons I bought this toaster oven is because it can make nine slices of toast at the same time. That's one slice of toast for everyone in my family at the same time. Are you okay with smoke coming your way? Yes, I'm okay. It also has some pretty stellar toast settings. You select how many slices you're making and a darkness setting between one and six. On my old toaster oven dial, being off a millimeter meant the difference between lightly toasted and scorched earth. Let's see how this one does. Well, I'm happy to report this thing makes toast really well. I mean, I'm a simple man and it doesn't take much, but if it can do nothing else, at least it can do this. Perfect repeatable toasting makes me happy. It even has a bagel setting that uses slightly less heat on the bottom. That is so thoughtful. I've also created this darkness setting toast guide for your convenience. Okay, now that we know it can toast well, let's move on to baking. Next up, chocolate chip cookies. For our chocolate chip cookies, we use the recipe on the back of the Nestle Toll House chocolate chip bag. It's a solid recipe, and since we make it a lot, we have a baseline of how these should come out. Well friends, it can bake too. Our first batch was a little overcooked, but keep in mind this is a convection oven, so you need to adjust your cook times and temps if you're adapting from a traditional oven recipe. Our second batch was spot on. This thing is turning out to be a solid unit. First batch at 375, second batch at 350. Much better bottom. All right, no more cookies for you. I don't know how you got this many cookies. Did you steal another cookie? Yeah. Did yeah. you do a good job making cookies? Yeah, once we got the temperature figured out, yeah, I think it did. Do you want more cookies? Yeah. You how have many have you had? All these cookies here. How many cookies have you had? Look at it's here and here and on your mouth. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh don't wipe it on my Okay, for our final test, we're gonna use the dehydrator function. And we're putting it in a head-to-head -head battle with our tried and true dedicated dehydrator. The time chart for the ninja says seven to eight hours on the dehydrator setting, and on the Nesco it says four to ten hours. That's quite the range. The ninja calls for one eighth inch slices and the Nesco three eighth. I have no idea how thick these are, so we'll just dehydrate till they look done. One disadvantage to using the Ninja as a dehydrator over a dedicated dehydrator is its capacity. You're limited to this one basket, but if you want to do some occasional beef jerky or dried fruit, this may be an option for you. Okay, so I just went until they looked done and that ended up being just under six hours. The results, they look virtually identical. So how do they taste? Tell me which one tastes better. All right, I'm gonna do a little taste test here. First up, we're going whichever dehydrator we have. Tastes like a dehydrated apple. Okay, try the other one. Taking t you're taking forever. The Ninja, definitely more dehydrated. The Ninja's more dehydrated? Yeah, way more dried out. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I would say it's a good thing because it technically did a better job because it's supposed to be dehydrating. Point to the one you prefer. Really? Why? I'm just like, to me, they taste sweeter. In the end, the Ninja Foodie dried them out a little better than the Nesco, so not bad, Ninja. All right, let's talk about the cleanup. It wasn't as bad as I thought. 
After the chicken wing fiasco, it was pretty gross and I thought I was in some real trouble. But you can access the entire oven through this back door and it allows you to get to all the nooks and crannies and give it a deep clean. So it has that going for it. I have to say, I don't really have any negative things to say about this thing. Believe me, I would tell you, just watch my other videos. One of the main reasons we bought it was for this reason right here. We have limited counter space and when you're done using it, you can fold it up and out of the way. It works perfect in this corner of our kitchen. After you're done cooking, you have to let it cool down a bit before you can flip it, but it even tells you when to flip. I do have to say this does take a while. It took about a half hour for it to cool down, but you can speed it up by leaving the door open. Oh, and one more thing. I shot this video in September and I'm finally getting around to editing it six months later. And we have used this thing almost every single day since then. So take that for what it's worth. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you on the next one. God bless. What? I'm gonna hug you. You wanna hug me? Okay. Done?